there's nothing more inspiring than hearing real people overcome real challenges to get the results they want, especially when those are the same results you'd like to see in your own life. That's why in this bonus episode, we are going deep with another amazing woman who's actually been there, Rachel Elmore, someone who has mastered the art of creating a healthy and sustainable lifestyle for herself. And I can't wait for you to hear her story. Welcome to the Feel Better Live Free podcast brought to you by Thinlicious. I'm your host, Ruth Sukup, and here we'll talk about everything from the science of weight loss to practical tips for making your health a priority in the midst of a busy life. It's a little bit nerdy, a little bit funny, and a little bit revolutionary. So buckle up, friend, because it's about to get real. Hey there, and welcome back to the Feel Better Live Free podcast. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ruth Sukup, and I'm the founder of Thinlicious and the creator of the Thin Adapted System, as well as the New York Times bestselling author of seven books. And in this special bonus episode, we are taking a deep dive into what transforming your health actually looks like by sitting down to chat with one of our amazing clients, Rachel Elmore. Rachel joined our program in 2022 and has lost around 30 pounds, but in the process has totally transformed her health, her energy levels, and her mindset. But as always, it is way better to hear her talk about it in her own words. So here's what she had to say. Rachel, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited to talk to you. Oh, I'm so happy to talk to you today too. (laughs) Yay. So let's just start with like little background. Tell us a little about yourself what you do, where you're from, how you got involved in this world. <laughs> I, I live in Southwestern Virginia near the Blue Ridge Mountains. In fact, I can see them out my window here. Oh, I'm jealous. Um, it's, uh, it's a nice, sunny, not too hot day today. So that's good. And my kids went back to school finally. Yay. Yes. <laughs> I've also been quiet for two days in a row in the morning. Oh, that's um, so nice. I do, uh, I do work from home. I work customer service. And so I just kind of sit and talk on the phone half the day. I, I actually, that's part of one of my wins from the program is I now have the ability to focus and work full time now and do other things. (laughs) That's amazing. So I was working part time for a long time. I did. uh, I just did the stay at home mom for a long time. I have four kids, uh, two are young adults, 20 and 23. The other two are eight and 12 at the end of this week. (laughs) Oh, so that's like big age gap between those. There is, yeah. So, and that was, again, I think we've talked about this before. One of my whys for wanting to get healthy was, you know, not only if the older two end up having kids, I want to be that cool grandma, but also I don't want to act like the old grandma when my youngest graduates. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I'll be getting close to 60 when, when he graduates high school and I still want to be able to climb up and down those steps in the stadium and, you know, uh, any of the thing, activities he wants to do, I want to be able to keep participating, you know? Yeah, totally. That does, it does make such a difference. Like it's interesting when your kids get a little older, right? Like but my husband and I, there's a big um, age gap between us. So he's like, I was kind of the normal age mom, at, and, but he was, he's like the older dad. And when they get into high school, right? Like they get a little older and they start to notice that there's a difference and they're, yeah. you know, it's like, you kind of like want to, want to keep up a little bit. So I have to be like extra keep up. <laughs> well, and I'm, I'm the, kind of in, the in an opposite. I'm kind of in an opposite than you. My husband is actually almost 12 years younger than me. Oh, wow. So you got to keep up with him. No, I do. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And I tease him now. I'm like all this, all this, uh, good stuff I've, you know, changed over and you know, eating better. I'm working out a little differently now. And I was like, I- I'm going to be younger than you for a longer time, I think. Cause he still eats a little too much junk. So, uh-huh. you know, oh. I mean, his eating habits have changed somewhat just because I don't bring as much junk into the house now. Yeah. <laughs> That, but that he, makes still, sense. he still likes he's, his Mountain Dew a little too much. He sneaks <laughs> it in. Yeah. It hasn't caught up with them yet. Yeah. 
It will. <laughs> That's funny. So, okay. So let's back up a little bit and tell us like a little bit about your health journey and, and when you got started and how, why you got started and, and what happened. So, yeah, I guess actually when the last one was born, he was born in 2016. I was like, that's when I kind of realized I got to figure out how to do better now. You know, it was the pregnancy and the birth were kind of crazy. I ended up not being able to sit for a long time afterwards. I couldn't eat meat anymore when I got pregnant with him. Really? I I don't know why. It just made me nauseous. You've heard of the alpha gal when you get the tick bite, right? It Uh was like that, but I could eat other things cooked with meat. I just couldn't eat the actual meat. Interesting. (laughs) I have heard Um, that happens to people. So, you know, and I had a lot of depression issues off and on my entire life anyway. So I started out then going to a chiropractor, trying to get my back straightened out so I could sit went to a counselor and then, you know, I started decluttering my house. I was like, okay, I can do something else too, to still continue with, you know, I'm still not feeling good. You know, I feel overweight a little, I was never, I don't think I was ever obese, but I got fairly close. Um, And so then I was like, I got to do something else. And then all of a sudden I start getting those emails from you about something big's coming. I'm like, Oh, she has good stuff. I'm interested. <laughs> so, well, that's and, good. <laughs> and one of my big whys as far as really jumping into this was that I did not want to have the old lady belly like my grandmothers both did. Oh, yes. And they always looked, even as a, I was eight years old and I was like, I really don't think their bellies should be that big. You know, they shouldn't look like they're pregnant at 50s to 60s, you know? Yes. I was like, I've got to figure out how to keep myself from doing that. I, I knew that as a young kid, that that probably wasn't healthy. <laughs> so yeah. I'd fix it. Right. Right. Because it seemed like a lot of old ladies had that. And I just mm-hmm. started noticing it more and more the older I got, the closer I'm getting towards that, you know, and I was like, oh, what do I do? And that's, you know, when I saw the information come into my email from me, I was like, very intriguing. So, <laughs> you know what? I am just going to do it. I'm going to go all in. I know it wasn't quite the same program that we have now. I mean, uh, there's been some tweaks to it, you know, over the couple couple of years, but I think that's been good. Yes. But I definitely streamlined it a little bit. (laughs) I dove in like head first. I knew the things that I had, I had to read first. I couldn't just jump into phase one, you know, back then we didn't have phase zero. So I just kind of made my own in June. I bought it day one. But I did a lot of reading, not only of your information, the labels in the grocery stores. <laughs> like oh, I right. probably spent way too long in the grocery store just reading, reading, reading. I'm like, yeah. oh, wow, this is a lot of crap I've been eating. <laughs> yeah. You don't even realize because it's everywhere. It it's is. Yeah. Crazy. It's just, it was, and that was really my preparation was just figuring out how to make it so that I could actually do it. Cause it sounded like it was something that would help me. Yeah. Yeah. And so you, so you bought like the first day, like June, for, what was that? June 1st, 2022, yeah. I think was the day we it launched. Was, yeah, yeah. Right there. June Super fan. June 2nd. I was like, ready to go. Cause <laughs> I you, love it. You have given me enough information in those emails right beforehand to, to really have piqued my interest. I have tried so many online programs, whether it was house cleaning or, you know, uh, budgeting or whatever, you know, and even some exercise programs. And I was like, eh, I'll try it. I, you know, it really, it wasn't super expensive. It seemed like it was, oh, it probably would be good for the money. And I don't even remember how much it was. I probably now knowing what I know now, I probably would have paid a thousand dollars just for that first one. Yeah. I know you don't know what you don't know until like all of a sudden you experience it. So yeah. you, t- so you signed up in June, but then you didn't, you say so you were just doing kind of research for li- how long was that? Like a couple of weeks or did I, you, I, I guess the first two weeks really were just looking into exactly what I've been eating, what I needed to start eating. Mm-hmm. Um, how could I change this around so that I didn't completely alienate my family? <laughs> Mm, yes. You know, I mean, 
I knew I had a problem with the Ben and Jerry's, you know, that was a struggle I've had for years and years. So I just decided at that moment, I was not going to buy that anymore. Yeah. The rest of the family didn't eat it because I didn't let them, you know. <laughs> so that wasn't, a, that wasn't a sacrifice so for anyone I else. Bought their, <laughs> I bought their junk food that they, they like that I knew I really couldn't care less about, you know, I don't yeah. really like Oreos all that much. So that was what I bought. Yeah. I don't like, I've never been a big chip person. So I was still bought them some chips. Yeah. Um, but I was like, you know, I've got to try some of these new recipes or either figure out how to make what I know how to make into what I should be eating now. So I had already changed out my cooking oil. I was using avocado and coconut oil for like a year or so before I started. So that mm. really wasn't a big deal. Um, yep. I had gotten rid of those bad oils. I changed over to, well, it was kind of a gradual move over into more organic and grass fed, like the beef and vegetables and stuff. I have always loved vegetables and fruits. My mom said I was the weirdest kid in the world because I would eat a salad. I would eat carrots. I would always eat broccoli, you know? Yeah. And so she said, she's, uh, you know, that always surprised her that other kids are going for French fries and I'm going for, you know, the lettuce or something. <laughs> yeah yeah so that wasn't a problem and then you know when I first heard it I was like it's low carb what does this mean I can't have my vegetables <laughs> like, I still no, have vegetables broccoli. there's color yes. oh, this is things I already like <laughs> yeah you know so okay. I didn't you know I, I did stop eating those higher sugar fruits for a while because mm -hmm. I knew that I had a sugar problem and basically, actually, the first month, once I officially started on July 4th of that year, I guess, what, 2022, mm -hmm. I actually cut out all fruit, period. I cut out oh, wow. all sugar, all anything that even tasted like sugar. I didn't use any of your dessert recipes or anything like mm -hmm. that because I, I had to go cold turkey. I, I yeah. felt like that would have been, the, that was the best way for me to do it. I had to be really strict in that first few months just to get it out of my system because I knew that. I didn't think I was one of those, what are they, moderation people? Yes. <laughs> I'm more of an all or nothing kind of person. So yeah. I I, I kind of cut all that stuff out. I focused on getting those, you know, good proteins, the nice green vegetables. Like I said, those are all things I liked anyway. And I told you about the meat thing when I was pregnant. Yeah. I can eat meat, a lot of meat now. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. So that's it went away. Did it go away right after you were pregnant or did it, it take a while? It took a long time. Like I still couldn't eat it. Even when I first started, I can eat a oh, little bit. Yeah. Um, like maybe two to three ounce portions of pork and beef, turkey and chicken were okay. Um, as I got farther into TAS though, the longer I was doing it, the more beef and pork I could eat. And now I can have like a big old six ounce steak. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's so good. <laughs> They'll ask me every now and then, can you eat? I don't know, like the meat thing. Cause she remembers when I wouldn't eat it. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, I can get a big giant piece of pork now. Or, you know, have a nice it's big pork funny. tenderloin. Yeah, I know. It's, it's crazy. Like that. I mean, I didn't eat meat for so long for 28 years. I was vegetarian and so that's what my kids remember growing up too. And my husband, and even now when I'm like eating a big old steak, they're like, this is so weird. This is so different, mom. Like we like this version of you much better. <laughs> yeah. And now it's funny. I used to be my husband ate um, a, most of the meat that I would cook. We'd give the kids a little bit. I'd have a little bit and he'd eat most of it. I think I have twice as much as he does now. <laughs> I'm like, you need more protein, dear. Take, take some more. <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. So you started July. So then what had, like, what's been your experience? What did your health journey look like? You slowly started adding meat. You totally went cold Turkey on sweets, which is an interesting approach because, you know, we do have like approved sweeteners and lots of dessert options and stuff. And a lot of people will say like, Oh, those are what saved me. Right. Like having I know, those I hear options. That. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I know, and a lot of people, I think it probably does work for, I just, I know the few times I tried to quit, like, I think we did the whole 30 one time. And if it weren't for the fruit, I don't think I would have made it through that, you know, cause mm -hmm. on whole 30, you can eat as long as it's whole foods. Yeah. And so I could eat a big old watermelon. Yeah. Whole thing. That was my, 
<laughs> that was my sugar. You know, I knew yeah. I had a problem with sugar and I just mm -hmm. really wanted to get it out of my system totally, yeah. even though I know the the approved sweeteners don't behave the same. It's just, I felt like my brain would think it was, and I'd eat more of yeah. that than I would, you know, the salad that I liked or the the protein or whatever, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting but, um, that the, somebody I've had him on the podcast and I forget his name, sugar free man, forget what his name is. That's his, I that's remember his who company. he is, but I don't remember yeah. his name. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember his name either, but he did talk about that, how you should just totally cut it out. Like if you really do struggle with sugar, just like you have to break it. And yeah. even the, even, so it's not a bad, it's not a bad idea. Like did, so did it, did you feel like it worked for you? Like how long did it take yeah. before you felt like that was fully out of your system? I think probably one, let's see, I started July. It was probably in September. No, be, maybe beginning of October. I knew like Halloween was coming soon and there would be Halloween candy. The kids would be bringing home, even if I didn't buy it. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, I guess I need to test it out and see what it feels like now to have something sweet or at least sweet tasting. So that's when I started getting mm -hmm. uh, fruit again. Like okay. I would have, I had the blueberries, the strawberries, the raspberries, all those things. So that's what I started adding to my yogurt. Um, Cause I do, I, I actually, I have for some reason always liked a nice plain yogurt. Yeah. Um, but so I started adding that and I was like, okay, I think I can do this. So then I tried a few of the desserts and I re I realized I was like, okay, I am all right now just having a little bit of this and saying no to the rest. Although I will say you, I still can't do a pint of any ice cream, whether it's good for you or not. <laughs> <laughs> like the, I know we have the rebel ice cream, which is not as bad, right? Yep. No, don't let me have that. No, I make, I have, thing. um, I have one of those Ninja creamy things. And so I make my own um, ice cream mix and freeze it. I, I have like a bunch of them. I can only fill up the canister halfway because I will eat the whole thing, <laughs> even though I make it with coconut milk and yeah. you know the healthy sweeteners, or I do like a cottage cheese based ice cream or something like, or yeah. even just fill it full of fruit and mush it and freeze it. You know, that's another yeah. one. I, I can You'll just go for thing. it. Just love it. That's so funny. I mean, at least you know that about yourself. <laughs> so, so, okay. So by September, by September, October, you had broken the sugar addiction. How, what did that start looking like for you? Like physically from like, feel like how you felt, how you looked all the things. Yeah. So I was one of those, um, low energy level. It was the slow raise for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, I just realized probably in, um, I guess it was the very end of July. I was like, you know what? I didn't want to take a nap today. And then towards the beginning of August, I was like, I've actually done stuff and I don't feel tired. I've made it all the way to nine o'clock and I'm not exhausted. Yeah, I'm tired at nine o'clock, but I'm not exhausted falling over. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so that's when I was like, I guess I need to move to phase two. So yeah. Because I like didn't, you didn't I looking, feel like that instant switch. It just yeah. sort of happened gradually that's, over time. That's what I was looking for. And I was like, wait a minute, I do have energy. It just didn't happen all of a sudden. I was yeah. like, I can, because I've, I've been running since the 11 year old was probably about six months old. And oh, okay. so about 10 years now. And I would actually just get up and go running and have energy to do stuff the rest of the day. Before that, if I went running, I would I just be the yeah. rest of the day, yeah. but, you know, just not good. Like and it would take everything out of you. It just did. And so then through August and September and October, and you know, even through the holidays, I finally realized that the more of those good things that I ate, the better and better I felt. Mm. I've never been in it for the actual number on the scale, but it was when the clothes started getting looser and I, I swear my belly was the last thing to go and I still <laughs> have a little bit. It is, it is like mocking me, <laughs> but I tell you what though, my waist to hip ratio is actually finally in that normal level. Cause I lost wow. my chest first, <laughs> Oh yeah. and then my hips, my hips went down. So small. I'm like, wait a minute. What, huh? What? When I did all my measurements, as I went through 
you know, that first six or eight months or so. And I'm like, what happened to my hips? That is yeah. really crazy because I've always had a big butt. And evidently, that's what happens in my my family, you know, <laughs> or at least my mom's side, all of yeah. my, my female cousins, you know. <laughs> big butt, big belly. <laughs> Where hips go, they're they're almost gone. What in the world? But then there's that belly still. I'm like, Doug, go away. While it was ever so slowly, slowly getting smaller. Yes. It just, it just was still not as quick as the others. So that was still something I, I fought with off and on forever. I'm like, no, it is smaller. You have to remember that it is smaller. And that's where a lot of those mindset lessons that we do came in. Mm -hmm. That's been really, that was really, I guess my saving grace was just doing, what is it? Is it six? Less than Less six. Than six. <laughs> yeah. The mindset lesson. Over and over and over ones. again. Yes. Yeah. For those, for those uh, probably first uh, six or eight months after I heard those, I know we did them at live in the beginning. And then I was like, that's something I need to hear again. So I did it again about every couple of months just to get that reminder. Yeah. yeah that's really the, self, the self-sabotage lesson. So yeah. we talk about that one. It is, it's so, it's so huge. And I was actually going to comment on that because as you're talking, like I can just hear the mindset, you know, so often we go like those of us who have dieted over and over and over again, like you just want everything to happen so fast. And the reality is that like, it takes a long time for your body to get all out of whack and it takes a long time to get it back in. And if you can just enjoy that process and realize like, I feel better and maybe I feel better before I look exactly the way that I want to, but I'm just like, I'm just going to keep going. And cause I know that this is like the right, this is the right fit. And it sounds like you've really, um, embraced that part of the journey. Oh yeah. I'm definitely a lot nicer to myself now. <laughs> and, I, and it, it is, it is, has been very helpful having those mindset lessons. And I, I know I don't come to as many as I used to just because of the way my work schedule changed, but even uh popping into a, a coaching call once a month or your mindset lessons that you do, those have just been, you know, great, just reminders to keep going the way I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Just to keep it up. I know. And have that, have that thing. So I have a couple of questions. So first of all, you said you struggle, you've struggled with depression, like throughout your life. How has that been impacted at all by your health journey? Yeah, I think a lot. Um, I mean, I've, I've had the same counselor off and on since my youngest was born and I really don't have to talk to her very often anymore. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I do just to kind of check, check in, in here and there yeah. just because I did have so many problems in my early adulthood. And I, <laughs> I told her, I said, I'm sorry, I don't need to see you that much anymore. She's like, don't worry about it. Yeah. It's like, that's a good thing. <gasps> that's amazing. I mean, so you I just feel myself, like more, more steady and stable. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I catch myself getting down here and there and it's something that is, it's so much easier. I can pull myself out of it now. I don't need the help of that professional anymore. It doesn't seem like, or I haven't gotten low enough yet to need that mm -hmm. professional help again. You know, if it's life throws all kinds of weird, crazy stuff at you. Oh, it does. <laughs> Yes. Sometimes, you know, you just want to lay in bed and cover up and never get out. But then you're like, no, wait, I've got to wallow maybe a little longer. And then you're going to get up and you're going to keep going. <laughs> and it's so much easier to do that now. <laughs> wow. And it's, a, it's amazing. And I think it really is a combination of the mindset work, right? Like of knowing how to like, how to pull it, how to talk, like control your thoughts basically, and how to monitor that you're thinking about things, but also like physically, right? Like you're physically getting the serotonin producing in your gut because your gut is healthier. Like all of the physical changes, like the mind gut connection is so strong too, that that combination of those things makes it, makes a huge, huge difference. So how, like, how has this affected your family having kids, right? And young kids at home, do you cook mostly the thinlicious way for your whole family? Um, or do you cook separately for them? How do you make that work? Uh, it's, I, yeah, mostly thinlicious way, I guess, um, with a, a pot of macaroni and cheese for them to eat, but you know what? They don't even eat it as much as they did. Yeah. <laughs> I fix it and it, it lasts for leftovers now. Yeah. 
it's funny how their tastes change. Like I have seen that with my kids because, and I think it's like really weird. I don't know how you feel about this, but I like, I want my kids to eat healthy. Right. And so doing all of the education and everything that we do through TAS that like you've gone through the whole program, like you learn how this stuff is affecting your body. And so my kids, like my kids are thin, they're teenage girls, like they're beautiful, right? They're, they don't need, they don't need to worry about weight loss or anything like that. And so my like number one concern is how do I just model a healthy attitude towards food that they're going to pick up on and not have like all these weird hangups that so many teenage teenagers get. But at the same time, like, I know if you're eating, if you're just eating crap and sugar and chips and junk food all the time, that is like toxic chemicals you're putting in your body. Like that's so bad for you, right? Like, I don't care what you weigh. I care like what, what this food is doing to your body. And so it's like, I find myself having that like struggle all the time of like, like, don't say anything, right? Don't like, just let them figure it out. But I have noticed that the food they crave, the food they ask me to cook all the time is always delicious recipes. Like they just, that's what they want. Like they, and, and so I'm like, okay, maybe this is like working in some like way that someday they're going to carry Slowly. this on. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they're it's interesting. Eventually. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And like, I, um, you know, we used to have whatever meat sides there was, a, I've always had a vegetable mostly cause I liked it and yeah. I always made them at least have a little bit, but yeah. now it's, it, it's cooked a little bit differently because I use those different oils. Um, we, you know, we don't use as much processed stuff. Um, mm -hmm. they still have their breakfast cereal or their frozen waffle in the morning, but I also might try to have boiled eggs. So they have something like that. Or uh, if I'm not super busy in the morning, I'll do some scrambled eggs or whatever. But, but yeah, they, they, they have really not gotten on board with too many of the cauliflower things though. Maybe <laughs> I just like it because I just like cauliflower. I mean, I can just eat yeah. cauliflower plain. So yeah. Yeah. My kids actually don't love cauliflower either, but they love spinach like spinach and broccoli I can't, oh, they yeah. cannot get enough of that if I if I make spinach I have to make the like this huge container of it because it just is like oh, it's crazy I'm like I've never known kids that just That's love good spinach. <laughs> I guess it is good for them <laughs> but yeah it's 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 funny yeah. so I'll let, I would, what like what advice would you give you like you've been through our program, right? Like you've gone through it. You've been doing it now for a couple of years. Like you're seeing continual results. And I feel like, like that's an amazing accomplishment in and of itself, right? To just stick with something for several years to continue to see the health benefits. I'm sure you've had highs and lows. Like, have there been any times where you felt like you totally fell off the wagon or how did you get back on track? What, how has that been for you? Um, well, I think managed it uh, uh, fairly well as far as not falling off the wagon by allowing myself here and there to have something that maybe isn't on plan. I I will say, you know, we're going to go out for ice cream and we go out and we have the good ice cream at the, the, the local ice cream parlor. And, but I get the small, you know, I don't get the yeah. giant waffle cone. I get <laughs> one scoop. If I do get a waffle cone, you know, I'll, I'll do it. But I also made sure that I made better choices earlier in the day, you know? Yeah. Um, then, you know, and we don't do that all the time. If I do just get a fun, I see a fun new dessert that I think the kids will like, you know, in the ice cream section or whatever, or if we're going to somebody's birthday party, you know, I now know that it is okay for me to have a small piece of cake or a small yeah. cup of ice cream that doesn't make me feel bad. If right. I, every now and then I have had a little too much, like maybe at Christmas time, I'll have a few too many desserts. I'm like, Ugh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I really do now I weigh my thing, you know, is having this much of this item really worth how bad I'm going to feel the next day. So that really has helped me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it's really so, just about how you feel. It, with, it is. With it's, food. it's been, um, I know a lot of, one of Lisa's favorite things was to say, you know, you fall off the wagon and you get run over and they let it drag you. And I'm like, I can't do that. Or I just will never come back. I don't think, yeah. but then again, I'm like, no, I think I probably would come back. Yeah. 
But yeah. I was trying not to let that happen. And that's where I do make those mindful decisions. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have some french fries, but I'm going to have it with my salad, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I think like, so it sounds, are you like, would you consider yourself phase three now? Like more just maintenance? And I think, I think I officially decided to do maintenance probably at the beginning of this year. I, okay. I thought, you know, that's when I noticed that my waist to hip measurements was really in that normal range. Mm-hmm. And that's really what I was looking for in the beginning was mm-hmm. not to have that bad ratio there. Cause that's really where I was worried. Um, and I, so I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to move into maintenance and it has, it's been forever since I've tracked anything because I, it was really hard for me to track as long as I did. And I knew I had to for a long time to get to where I needed to be. And so that's something I just kind of stopped. But I also, I knew if I wasn't going to track, I really do have to pay attention on, I can't have a lot of weird stuff. So that's what I make sure I have stocked all the fruits and vegetables I like. I make sure I have, instead of pasta, I was a huge pasta girl. Now I do, I like the palmini, the hearts of palm noodles. Oh, that, I've never had I those. I think I've tried using the egg life as noodles. I've tried the, yeah. the lasagna recipe where you use the chicken slices mm-hmm. and those are Hey, you know, they're good, mm-hmm. but I like the palmini, the hearts of palm, the best. Oh, That's my favorite those. one. Yeah. I substitute. Like tonight we're having the, um, the spaghetti and meatballs, except for I'm having palmini and I did do oh, have nice. the, the cheese stuffed meatballs though. <laughs> That's right. <really good. laughs> Yum. <laughs> those are so good. <laughs> I love a meatball. I always say that to my husband. Like, I yeah. Love so I mean, <laughs> and to tell, and actually, even though I'm in maintenance, I think my, my waist, my hips and my chest measurements really just stayed pretty even for the last year. And my, my waist has actually gone down about another half inch in the last six months or so. Oh yeah. And that's probably because you're just continuing to, to eliminate the insulin resistance and all the things that make us cling to that, to that belly fat. So that's amazing. I mean, and I, I think like we don't always give credence to the fact that when you have, and I don't know like what your story is, cause we didn't talk about this, but like for, for me, for instance, I like so many yo-yo diets, right? Like d- crash diet, lose a few pounds, gain it all back. Like the fact that you're just stable for a, an extended amount of time that you have a system that you kind of know what to eat, you know, what makes you feel good. Like this truly has become a lifestyle for you. Yeah. One that you can absolutely live with, enjoy your life, go enjoy ice cream with your kids, never feel like you're being deprived and yet stay like, stay where you want to be. Like that is, that's the goal. That's the dream. That's exactly what we're trying to do here. Right. Like it's, and it's, you don't think it's possible when you've like crashed and burned so many times and to like, see that and to like, hear you talk about it. Like, it's just, this is just how it is. Right. Like it doesn't even feel weird to you. It, like it just, this is just what makes me feel good. Why wouldn't I want to eat this way? I love, I love that. I love it. Like it's so inspiring. Yeah. I think, and especially now, whenever we go out, whether we're at a restaurant or a friend's house, family member's house or whatever, it's a lot easier now for me to pick and choose what I feel like is going to be the best thing for me, even if there aren't the greatest options, you know, yeah. if there's just fried chicken and mashed potatoes and green beans, then I know I'm going to get my fried chicken, but I'm not really going to eat that fried part. I'm going to go in for the meat on the inside, you know, yeah. um, I'm not going to get the rolls. I've never been a big bread person. Um, but the one thing that I did miss for some re- weird reason was a good bagel. Oh, really? So while I do like the low carb bagels and I do still make those, I just a regular good New York bagel. And so that's, that's really been one of my things I do eat more often now, except I get the mini version oh, and I have it, that's so um, smart. I have it every now and then I do fill it up with some cheese or butter or whatever, you know, all those good healthy right. fats, but I eat it after I have my eggs or after I have my yogurt with my fruit in it, you know, yeah. and right. it's not, you know, it's not every day, but it's something I right. decided that it was worth adding it in and having the right. mini one. It doesn't bother me. Well, I mean, and that's also the goal of being metabolically flexible, right? Is that now your body actually can handle 
more yeah. carbohydrates and you can, and it's not going to throw you off. It's not going to like ruin you. You're, you, you're, you're not, as long as you're not like eating a whole cake all at the same time, which will make you feel like crap, right? Like a, a oh, yeah. carbs here and there are going to, you're going to feel fine and you're going to do fine. And clearly you are doing amazing. So that's just, that's so cool to, cool to see. So just as we're wrapping up, like what advice would you give somebody who's just getting started? If you could go back and tell yourself something back in June of 2022, what would it be? Uh, oh gosh. It just, it sounds so cliche, but I really strongly believe it is just trust the process, read all the information, learn it, follow it as well as you can, you know, with do what you can with what you have and move forward from there. But just trust that it may not be that straight line that we want to see, but it will happen depending on, you know, I feel like I did, I caught this fairly early. So I feel like I got into phase two kind of quickly compared to some people, but I don't think I was only 30 pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have a lot more weight to lose and it's going to take them longer. But again, it was hard for me to just start and go. And I think I know you kind of said that to us in the beginning was just start, get moving, do what you can. And that's really just the best thing is just trust that it will work eventually. If you keep plugging along, it's slow to slower, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that's probably the best way to do it though, because all those quick diets, as we found out through the nineties and two thousands, <laughs> they, uh, quick off even faster back on <laughs> faster back on and not sustainable, right? Like you no, can't, not in you the can't live your life. Yeah. And I really, I think this is just super sustainable. And, Clearly. you know, even if I were to try and eat a whole cake, I don't think I could, if I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably a good thing. Rachel, thank you so much for joining us today. I loved hearing your story. I'm so proud of you and just so thrilled like that you have had such like, like such huge success, not just in the weight side of things, which obviously you have, but like just the whole mindset shift and that you've made, like, the, like, I just like, there's like joy that radiates out of you. So thank you for being part of this. Well, thank you for getting me started. I know I did the <laughs> hard work, but you would, it, it wouldn't have happened without you starting it. Oh, you're welcome. Don't you just love Rachel's story and her attitude? It's so good. It's so inspiring. And if she can do it, it means you can too. And of course, that brings me to the end of this bonus episode. But don't be sad because I will be back with another new episode very soon.